You read what just came up on the screen, right? I believe many of you are familiar with the word documentary. From an average Indian perspective, these are ignorable films full of socio-political jargon. Remember the ones made by the films division? That's one kind of a documentary. What an average Indian doesn't know is that there are hundreds, thousands of actually great documentaries which we've never seen or heard about. Tell me, how many of you have heard of Adam Curtis? Michael Moore, Anand Patwardhan. These men are your Spielbergs and Camerons of the documentary world, but we've never heard of them nor seen their work. What you're about to see in this mockumentary is the collection, preparation and execution of weed in a small town. And my justifications for documenting such a mundane event. First up, we don't have good cameras around here. The best we get are what some acquaintances give away after never learning to turn the flash off. So even if I were to get ambitious without proper lights and other goods, it'll end up like the ongoing substandard. That had happened to me in the past and I can't take that again. So you come up with something you can shoot and tint it into black and white to make it look neat. None of my friends can act. They try but and I cannot afford to employ actors. We don't like what happens around. We don't like the mainstream cinema. We don't like the face tube sensations. We don't like the way they go about it, or the way they talk about it. The way, we don't like the way they fucking love it. We have to take it out somewhere. Well, I think that's justification enough. Got it? Yeah. Cut. Like I've told you guys, this is about collection, preparation and execution of the magic plan. Now weed's got many names. In my town it's called Ganjai. To smoke peacefully, one needs to pick a name that sounds harmless and stick to it. Grass, pot, shit, mal, whatever. This is one of the popular and also a very economic scoring destination. Most of my friends, guys from college and a majority of the other dopers I know get their grass from here. They call this D company in honor of Durga Ma, the woman who sells it. Anybody who had been smoking weed for long enough can always judge its quality by just smelling it. Bon dia. A dry run is a pretty common thing for most dealers of weed. That's why one has to keep up with the many dealers in town. The one opposite the bus stand and a few in the low-lying areas of town like Krishna Lanka are some of the easier alternatives. The number of alternatives is always an equation. The historical and geographical characteristics of a town plus or minus the level of cop control plus or minus the availability of other complementary goods such as chillums and rolling paper for instance this figure divided by the number of dopers in town. 
for some reason or the other, sometimes the whole town goes dry. That's when you get out of town to get the grass. The dealer here is called Krishna. At least that's what he tells us. Pseudonyms are a common thing amongst dealers. Here, it is a little expensive than usual. Just like getting liquor during probation. These guys beyond the river are never raided. I've seen Krishna, or whatever his real name is, with the cops plenty of times. So the bribe or commission Krishna pays to the cops is ultimately transferred to the dope consumers in the form of higher prices. For those of you who are even mildly familiar with weed, the word preparation would ring an immediate bell. But for the others, here's a small demo. There are hundreds of ways of crushing, mixing and rolling weed. But what you'll be seeing here is these actions under the smaller town circumstances. First, take a sheet of paper. The wider the paper, lesser are the chances of spilling the weed. Then, you take weed according to your requirement and start mulling the weed into coarse powder. This is what is popularly referred to as crushing. Next comes the cleaning part. Now, empty some tobacco from a cigarette and mix it with the weed. The advisable ratio is when the green and the brown are in 70-30 proportion. Tobacco is used because weed on its own is not easy to smoke. And also, smoking 100% weed can push first-timers to hilltop streaks. Now, we have reached the final stage of preparation. The smaller town alternatives are these. A chillum, cigarette shells and rolling paper. Compared to other options, a chillum is easier to fill and less toxic. The tobacco from the cigarette is carefully taken out so that the shape of the cigarette is still intact and the weed is filled into it. The last and the usual favorite is using rolling paper. However, for this you'll need another attachment unlike our previous options. This people is a roach. These are similar to cotton filters of cigarettes. Hence, this is where your lips rest when you smoke. The materials for roaches ranges from matchbox casings to tops of cigarette packs to any other expendable cardboard. Now that you've got your attachment, place it somewhere close to the middle, put in a little weed to avoid a bad shape, and lick it to stick it. Talking about the small town constraints again, most of us live with our parents. So where we roll is anywhere but home. That ends our preparation demo, and now we enter the best part. Smoking need not be explained. Every film, good or bad, had done that many times over. The thing we as mockumentary makers would like to enlighten you about is where we smoke. Rooftops, dead-end streets and abandoned buildings are the popular options. But the best place for smoking weed is a hot box. A hot box, by definition, is a closed room with little or no ventilation. So when you smoke up in here, the smoke stays in and pushes it to the next level. The smaller bathrooms and the lift engine rooms of apartments are my best picks for hot boxes. Destroying the evidence once you are done smoking weed is very important, but it's not like what you see in the movies. People flushing the dope down the toilet with the cops at the door. It is never that dramatic, but illegal nonetheless. So, if you're doing it in a hot box, leave the door open for a while and let the smoke file out. And it's better if you can spray some Dior or perfume. Turn it in a room, open the windows, switch on the fan and spray some Dio or perfume. 
and if you cannot afford to waste good deo or perfume you can always use your more intense options room fresheners cockroach and mosquito sprays ankle sprays and what not when it is dead in streets and abandoned buildings just be sure nobody sees you there or at least make sure they don't know what you're doing <laughs>